We got my man Eric Bryant in the house today. Yes, sir. About to record a podcast, dive in, share some some information. Um, but I just wanted to touch real quick and ask him, dude, if you were brand new to the real estate wholesaling industry, what steps would you take starting tomorrow to get out there and find your first deal? All right, if I was brand new, I mean, we just talk about keep it simple, right? Keep it simple, stupid. It's acronym we, we live by in my business, right? So to keep it simple, I would drive for dollars. I'd get 50 properties a day. Yes, a day. You gotta be a hustler out there, so you gotta aim high, try and get those 50 properties a day. After I do that, I just bring them back in. I call them Skip Trace and I call them. I guarantee you, I would probably have a deal probably in the next week, you know what I know today. Just like that. Just like that. That simple. That simple. Keeping it. Don't overcomplicate it, man. So you're jumping in your car, jumping right? Jumping in your car. Cruising around some residential neighborhoods and streets. Right. You look for ugly, distressed, distressed houses. abandoned looking houses, and right? And make it even easier for you. Instead of writing them down, I'm going to download the Deal Machine app, right? So I can pinpoint exactly where I saw that deal's address. It's going to give me all that information of that owner, the absentee owner. So when I go back and I need to skip trace it, it's a click of a few buttons, it's going to export into a list that I can easily transfer into some place that skip traces it for me, gets me those numbers, and then I'm just going to go through those numbers and dial them. That's that golden. Deal. So Deal Machine, right? The Deal Machine app for someone that's brand new, brand new, right? Deal Machine, look in the app store. You download that app. Right. Cruise through these neighborhoods. When you see the ugliest house on the block, distressed houses, you ping it, right? You add it to your phone, and that's creating a database in your app that you can export, right? You can create a spreadsheet. Right. You can take those addresses and send it out to get skip traced. Yeah, I get skip traced. Get them back and call them. Go on a phone call them. That simple. I think my first deal was a, a drive for hours deal. My first deal was a drive for hours deal. Yeah. Doing that exact thing, drive for dollars. Yep. And so, once you get them on the phone, right, you gotta make sure you have a script, especially if you're brand new, yeah. right? You just, you don't wanna get on there, be like a deer in the headlights and get, get trigger shy. Right. You wanna make sure you have somewhat of a process. No, no reason to overcomplicate it, right. right? But have some type of a calling script that can guide your conversation right. with so, the sellers. And with that script, you know, it's, it's all right. I always say it's all right to have a script, but you don't wanna read off of that script, right? You don't want to sound robotic and lead, read word for word so it sounds like you're just reading the, the seller or whoever you have one other in the story, right? Use it as a guideline, right? Don't read it word for word because it's going to feel awkward. You don't want to feel like you're reading something to them, right? Yeah. So you just want to use it as a guideline and then that way you're able to have a, a conversation and actively think of your next question while I'm talking to the, you know, that seller. That's golden. You know? So once you have someone that raises their hand, right, yes, I might be interested in selling, where do you go from there? Yeah, where do you go from there? I'm just, I'm asking them the, the questions about the property and the situation. I want them to tell me everything about their life right then and there and everything about the property and how, you know, that distressed property came to be. I want, I want them to paint me a, a picture. Pay me a picture of what's going on so I know how to solve their problem. Or even if, is there even a problem to solve? Because if there's not a problem to solve, it's not a person I should be able to talk to. Right? Yeah. Once I get that and there's, a, there's actually a problem there, boom, we're going to immediately find out how we can solve that problem. Boom. So once you got, you got the solution, mm -hmm. you guys can agree on price, right? So you were able to take the seller's unique situation. Right and identify what problem do they have in their life or yep. their situation or with this piece of property that they need solved. Right. And you, coming from a creative deal structure standpoint, you're coming in here structuring your offer around that, yep. right? Yep, structuring offer around that. And then what, send the contract? Uh, not, not necessarily send the contract. I want to make sure that they're right fit for us as well, right? So we want to make sure um, as soon as we figure out, hey, if we can uh, come to an agreement on the price and then it's going to work for you, what are your next steps? Hey, what do you, what do you want to do with this, right? So I want to see hey, if, if I do give you this, let's say fifty thousand dollars for this property. What do you want to do next, Mr. Sorry? You want to sit on it? Do you want to go over with your wife? Do you want to sign a contract? What What do you think our next step should be? 
Right, what's your agenda? So you're giving them an opportunity, right? You're giving them a decision point. You're not forcing them into, hey, that sounds great, I'm gonna send a contract, but it's like, hey, what do you think that I should do? Exactly. You know, we're in a ballpark range of the price. What would you feel comfortable with in the next stage in our process? Right, exactly. So I know what's going on. I know what our next step should be as soon as I know that answer. I like and it. And then we go from there. Because I don't want to just send a contract out, right? And now he has the contract, he's looking at it, and now I'm sitting here two hours a day later wondering why he didn't sign the contract. He might have wanted to shop. I don't know if I didn't ask that question. Right, so we gotta figure out what's the next step. Okay, so next steps happen, the seller made the decision, signed the contract. Boom, you got your first property under contract. Where do you go from there? Oh yeah, where do I go? Um, so, just like driving for guys, you can drive for buyers. Come Very on. It's simple, man. So look, you drive for buyers, you look up, um, you just go to the neighborhood where you got the property from, you look for people that's already working on that property. So you'll see someone say, someone down the street, you see some people outside, I'm pulling over, and I'm introducing myself. Hey, my name's Eric. Um, I find properties like this all the time. You know, maybe I may be able to provide you with some more properties. Um, that you guys can flip and tell me a little bit about your criteria, right? He's gonna tell me about his criteria. I already know his criteria. I know it's the neighborhood he likes because I got one up the street. So as soon as he tells the criteria, I'm like, oh, ironically, Ben, I have a property very similar to this right up the street. I think it's something you might like, right? And so you can go from there, to, from where he's at, showing the property right up the street. Boom, you're like, there, there it is. You connect it to sell it by just by just driving for dollars. Right, and if, the, if and the person's not there, right, get his contact information from the people that are there. Because hey, we're trying to give them some more work too. It's not just going to benefit the person that's flipping the property. It's also going to benefit his his, his workers because they're going to have more work. So you got to you have to put it out in a way that's going to benefit everybody, so that person can give you that contractor's number, that, that buyer's number, right? Right there. Now there's a lot of different areas too that you can go out there and work to build your buyer's list. You can go browse Craigslist. Look for all the people that are in search of properties for sale. You can go to Craigslist and post your house or contract for sale. All the buyers that reach out to you, build the relationship, build the rapport, add them to your database. Another way, go to your local RIA. What is a RIA? Real Estate Investor Association. If you're in any major city or smaller tertiary metro hub, good chance there's a local RIA. Check out the online meetup. Look under RIA and there's likely a bunch of emails and people that are associated with that association. That's a quick little hack where you can pull out a bunch of addresses, a bunch of that's addresses, email addresses, a bunch of investor contacts, and instantly, boom, you just grew your buyers list, right? Facebook is another great resource. Once you have, what, 100, 200 buyers, find somebody to swap with. Hey, Mr. Wholesaler, I got a small buyer's list, you got a small buyer's list, let's multiply. Do that a couple times and before you know it, you're off to the races, Boom. right? Blew it up. Blew it up. Blew it up. So think about like small little things. How can I take small incremental activities, right? right? and do them over and over again to reach a little you know, amount of success. And then how do I multiply that, right? Think, think multiplicity. And eventually, I mean, Albert Einstein said it best, the eighth wonder of the world is compound interest. Compound interest. Compound interest. So how do you gain compound interest on your hustle, on your actions and activities that you're putting out every single day, even though it might not feel like you're reaching a whole lot of progress in your current situation, know that if you continue on this course, you're gonna amount to huge amounts of success. Mm -hmm. Gotta be consistent with it. Then it's just gonna blow up. Gonna blow it's up. It's gonna blow up, man. But that was gold though. Eric really is a deal practitioner, right? So from him going back and telling from experience what he would do to get out there in the trenches and how he would find his first deal, that's golden, right? You can get in your car, and drive, right? Don't just drive for a little pastime hobby. Mm -hmm. 
but drive with purpose, right? Get out there. I'm here to get 50 addresses a day for the next five days. Keep your head on a swivel. You drive it, get a look, look left, look right, see what's going on. Swivel mode. In swivel mode. <laughs> Straight up. Yeah. Yep. That's it. So there's nothing standing in your way. Get out of your own get it. direction. Get out there, jump in your car, download the Deal Machine app. We do have a quick little link in the YouTube video description. Shameless plug. But get out there, guys. The only barrier to entry is yourself. Get out of your own way. Make it happen.